to not scoot around on the bed or it might be really loud in the video. But I gotta like catch my breath. Okay. Anywho, bum the back. So I've never really done a sit down video like this without Jacob. Uh, but a couple of months ago, I felt like Jesus told me to make a video about tips for seasonal depression. It's something I've struggled with my entire life. Today is actually like 40 degrees and gray outside, so perfect weather for seasonal depression. Um, but it's something I've struggled with literally my whole life and it's really hard. It's really, really hard. And this video feels kind of vulnerable to make, but I also hope that if you come across it at all, like that maybe there's a tip in here that you haven't heard before or you haven't tried before and that it can bring some like life back into your life when you're walking through those really difficult seasons of depression. Oh, I, I have my notebook here with like all the tips I read out and I when picking the tips I came up with eight tips which eight is like kind of an annoying number in the like social media world like it's supposed to be like 10 15 20 like good numbers good not even but like well-rounded numbers and eight is kind of an annoying number to choose but eight is all that I came up with of things that actually like really, really helped me. And I don't want to come up with two more just so I have 10 tips if like those two other tips weren't actually super, super helpful. Oh my gosh, I'm winded. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. So tip number one is to make a super, super, super detailed list of things to do so I would literally wake up and use my phone or a piece of paper and like the first thing on my to-do list would literally just be get out of bed and then maybe it would be like brush my teeth eat a good meal today do my hair like really simple simple things because often for me, when I'm really depressed and really struggling, those little things can feel like a mountain of a task. Like, sometimes getting out of bed is the hardest part of the day. And so I make a really detailed to-do list. So then, like, throughout the day, even if I'm not, like, accomplishing much, like, I got out of bed. Like, I changed my clothes. I took a shower. I ate a meal. Like, these are accomplishments when you're really struggling. It would make me feel better at the end of the day to look over the list and be like, I did these things. That might be really easy for other people, but like in this season of my life and today they were really hard for me and like I'm proud of me for doing them. Tip number two is make notes of lovely things that happened throughout your day. So I have this big mason jar, or I don't anymore, but I did have this big mason jar in my room and beside it, there would be a little notepad and a pen. And I would carry around a sticky note and a pen throughout the day. And when any lovely thing happened at all, I would write it down. Um, actually, I might, I might have them. I don't do this anymore because I'm not walking through really deep, difficult depression. So I don't like have it out right now. I'm gonna see if I can find the jar after this with all the old notes but I would write on the note small things like my friend texted me and asked me how I was. I had a bowl of strawberries and they were super delicious. Like sometimes they were really teeny things like that or like I was able to find a good parking spot at work today. And other times like maybe they were bigger or like then at the end of the day I would stick them in the jar. I would date them and put them in a little, like a big mason jar that I had. And I did that for a really long time. And whenever I was having, there's kind of two reasons I would do this. One, if I was having a really, really terrible day, 
and maybe I like I could not come up with things to put on that like sticky note throughout the day I would just go and I would read a bunch of the other things that had happened different days just to like remind myself that like not every single day is gonna feel this heavy or be this difficult and there's like good things that will come and the other reason I would do it is to remind myself during the day to get out of my mind get out my little brain where maybe it's negative and not the happiest place to live right now and to like focus on good things that do happen throughout the day not because that'll make me feel completely better or I'll be totally happy if I realize like oh I have like a friend that reached out to me today like that was so kind of them like that's not gonna fix my depression but it's gonna keep me from only thinking negative thoughts all the time and that's really really helpful Tip number three is change your scenery. It could be you go outside, maybe you were in bed all day and like you move to the couch. It could be you go for a walk, you go to the library, you go to a coffee shop, you go take a shower, like just change your scenery. If you've been in one spot, like I do this, where I stay in one spot and I would sulk and just be sad in one spot for way too long like you need space to feel your emotions but like I don't need to feel sad for eight hours straight like I should go do something else go to a different space and that was always really 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 helpful especially if you haven't seen me one because I'm a pro at isolation when I feel depressed and that's not good for you and that's not helpful Okay, tip number four, take a shower. You probably smell bad. I know it's really difficult. You need to take a shower. And there's a lot of benefits to taking a shower. If you live with like a lot of people in like your space and you don't have like a good spot to go be alone, the shower, fantastic spot to cry it out. So great, done it many times, highly recommend. Also, the shower was a great spot for me to go and meet with Jesus because I could pray and I could talk to him and I could like tell him exactly how I was feeling and what I was frustrated with and what I was sad about or that I didn't know what I was sad about and I was frustrated that I didn't know what I was sad about and like he would meet me in the shower. So go cry it out, go meet with Jesus in the shower, go smell better. I promise you will feel better afterwards. Tip number five is to eat at least one nourishing meal. I know that when, I keep saying I know, but like these are all like from my experience, when I was really depressed eating was often difficult and it kind of got coupled with an eating disorder. That's a different video. But I would make it a goal to eat one nourishing meal. Um, instead of just like going to the pantry and kind of grabbing whatever was easy and quick and simple and like that's good still like I'm still eating and like giving energy and like food to my body which I still need but I would feel so much better physically mentally and emotionally if I ate like one full well-rounded meal instead of like random snacks from the pantry throughout the day uh, tip number six is if you're married, go have sex. It helps you get out of your head space, which that's what a lot of these tips did for me is help me get out of my head and just like back into reality and things that were happening around me. And it helps you connect with another person. And if you orgasm, it feels really good. And even if you don't orgasm, it feels pretty good. So go have sex, go be intimate with someone be loved by someone, love on someone. It's very helpful. Tip number seven is to try something new. So in my experience, when I'm really depressed, things that I used to love doing, they don't like bring me life anymore or they sound exhausting to do. So for example, I really loved watercoloring and like drawing and painting. And then I would get really depressed and the thought of doing that uh, sounded absolutely terrible. And then 
I would feel terrible that I didn't want to do a thing I used to love. I don't know if that even makes sense. But sometimes people would be like, oh, like you're like having a hard day, like go do something that's like life giving to you. And so I would think about all the things that used to be life giving to me and I'd be like, they all sound terrible and exhausting and I don't want to do them. So I wouldn't put pressure on myself when I felt really depressed to do the things that would normally give me life. And instead I would try something new. So some things I tried were uh, going to a different coffee shop than my normal one, going on walks in different places, which is still kind of insane. Um, I tried macrame and made a couple pretty cool kind of wall art pieces. It was really fun. Um, what else did I try? I don't remember. But yeah, go try something new. If you don't enjoy it, you don't enjoy it. And if you do, great. And like if I didn't enjoy it, I didn't feel guilty knowing that it was something I used to love. Okay, tip number eight is a mindset tip. And I would tell myself the goal isn't to be happy, the goal is to take care of myself. Because if I was doing everything else I just listed off to you and they were supposed to make me happy and they didn't, it would feel like I failed, which is not helpful. And so I, while I do want to like feel better and not feel so heavy and like burdened and weighty or apathetic or whatever, whatever the like emotion I was feeling from my seasonal depression, like I do want to get out of that and get to a better Bought, but all the things that I'm doing is to like take care of myself and love myself through it not to force myself to be happy and to get to the other side that's all the tips that I have I pray that that was helpful to someone somewhere out there that they could watch this and have a new thing to try and if you're currently walking through a season of seasonal depression or just depression in general like my heart goes out to you. It's really difficult. It's really hard. Go talk to a friend. Go talk to a counselor. Don't isolate yourself. Take some of these tips and try them. And like, it's so annoying when people say this. When they're like, it will get better. But like, it eventually does. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be at the end of the month. But like, you will not be in this season forever. And so while you're walking through it, just take care of yourself and love yourself well. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you're here, I really appreciate you. And 